128 on the 7th of October. There are 16 days until the sunset on the 23rd of October in Jerusalem. That sunset in Jerusalem will be the last day that they live in their temporary sukkahs. They will give those up at sunset. At that light of sunset, they will give those up. And then they will return to their permanently built homes. So they go from a temporary hut to a permanent home at sunset on the 23rd of October. I want to go from this temporary body into a permanent body at that same sunset. And I believe that because this is a mirror image of tabernacles, the Father will fulfill it on tabernacles. In a mirror image of tabernacles, just like Jesus, Ayasubar Ayah, fulfilled Passover, unleavened bread, during unleavened bread, in a mirror image of unleavened bread. And the Holy Spirit fulfilled Pentecost in a mirror image of Pentecost, on Pentecost. These three feasts being the Shalosh Regalim, these three entities, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit being one God, three as one, and the Shalosh Regalim being three feasts together as one Shalosh Regalim. I got a bunch of people coming here. Oh, who is Ayah? What is this Ayah? It's Yahuwah and Yashaya and Yashahashapachahaja. Go back to where you came from. Go back to the church of Laodicea that thinks that it knows but doesn't. That thinks that they're so wise and yet they're utterly foolish. Go back to that. Go back to living in the Hebrew roots, Babylonian understanding of Christianity. You are so wrong. So wrong. I find it hard to contain myself. When Paul wrote, Paul wrote to somebody and he said, lest I show up and give you a stern rebuke. Man, if I was standing in your presence, I'd be like, pull your head out of this Babylonian babble and start looking at the words of Christ. He said, you know, he is the vine. Christ is the vine. And we're the branches. All right, And every branch that does not bear good fruit, cut off, thrown in the fire. He says, if you abide in me and allow my words to abide in you, then you will produce good fruit. You won't be cut off. That's a biconditional agreement. You have to abide in Christ and allow his words to abide in you. I tell you, every Hebrew Roots Movement person has forsaken the words of Christ, utterly forsaken them. Firstly, because he said to the Pharisees who control the Hebrew language, you're of your father, the devil. He said they were of their father, the devil, these men who control the Hebrew language. And you want to go back to that? You want to gain your understanding from men who are of their father, the devil? Go and be gone with you. Go and be gone with you and do your Hebrew movement over there someplace. And leave the rest of us to the words of Christ, which were recorded in Swahili? No, no, it wasn't Swahili. Wait a second. The words of Christ were written down in Hebrew? No, no, they weren't written down in Hebrew. What, what language was it? that the words of Christ himself were recorded in so that we can have those words abide in us so that we can be not cut off from the vine so that we can remain in him and so that his words can remain in us. Let's see, let's see. What language was? It was Greek. It was Greek. Do you know the first time Christ's name was written in Greek? was in 200 B.C. by Jewish men who absolutely knew the Word of God and knew how to spell that name. And they spelled it Iota, Eta, Sigma, Omicron, Upsilon, Sigma. 
and they put that word before Ptolemy the Great, the ruler of Egypt, in the Septuagint. And they put it in there multiple times. And Ptolemy, who wanted the Septuagint, who wanted this Hebrew Bible, written in Greek, he wanted it so bad he got 70 different men who all understood the Hebrew Bible, who all spoke Hebrew, who all spoke Greek. And he said, hey, you take this thing in Hebrew and you put it into Greek for me. He's the ruler of all of Egypt. That man had some power. You think these men were going to lie to him? You think these men were going to create a Septuagint that wasn't worthy? The Jewish people in that country knew it was worthy because they started using it. Our book of Numbers is called Numbers because the Jewish people didn't want to write Bamid Bar. They said, oh, we'll call it Numbers. There isn't a translation. Well, you know, that's how we got the book of Numbers. Jewish people took this knowledge that they had and transferred it into Greek 200 years before Christ. And the only part I want you to think about is the spelling of the name of Joshua, which all of you <coughs> Hebrew Roots Movement people think you know so well, think you're so smart about. It's Jehoshua. It's Jehoshua. It all comes from that Joshua thing. Hey, guess what? That Joshua thing is I Iota, Eta, Sigma, Omicron, Upsilon, Sigma. Greek. I, uh, s, ooh, silent S. What's the problem? Well, that's not the original Hebrew. The original Hebrew was written by liars and dreamers. People Christ said, you're of your father, the devil. Every time you open your mouth, you speak a lie. Oh, but the words of Christ, that, that's what abides in you. So you go back to liars and dreamers to get your opinions, to get your knowledge. No wonder he's going to spew this church from his mouth. Ugh. It's insane how smart and stupid people can be at the same time. Listen to Christ when he said, These men are of their father, the devil. You're not going to want to listen to them about certain things. What was written is written and it always will be written. But the Maserites? Or Maserites, they came along and they put Nikud, little little itty bitty tittles, right? On Christ's word, on the Torah. Well, this is how it's actually. No! You don't take your pronunciation from them. You don't do that. We abide in Christ and we allow his words, written in Greek, to abide in us. And that Greek word for his name is Iota, Eta, Sigma, Omicron, Upsilon, Sigma. And it's pronounced I, Yasu. I, because it's, a, you know, capital I, capital Iota, I, very simple, I, like I went to the store. And then a uh, for Eta, T-H-E, the. So we'll take that uh, that E that can be an uh, and we'll go I, uh, s, O-U, like you, O U U I Y Su Silent S Works for me. I Yasu. And when you say I Yasu, it has Aya, the Father's name in it. And and Philippians two verses nine is glorified. Oh wait, those are words of Christ too. You should let those words abide in you. But if you don't abide in those words, you will be cut off. Oh, but Jesus would never leave me nor forsake me. You forsook Jesus when you went and studied with the Hebrew liars. You left. You didn't want his word to abide in you. You didn't want to know that those men are liars, that he said they're of their father, the devil. You ignored those words of Christ and went running back there to get your pronunciations. Shame on you. Shame on you. You're so sick you don't know it. You are filled with denial about the truth. You won't go to the words of Christ because they'll prove that you're wrong. But you'll go to the words of the Hebrews. You'll go to those guys. God had the Hebrew language die out 
because he wanted to write the New Testament in Greek, because he wanted it brought forward in Greek. You know how I know that? Because it was. Because God made that happen. The frustration is unbelievable. Because his words do abide in me. I go to his word. You read the little things under, the very first comment I think is mine, and it says more, and you push more. I read the more. Because you're not understanding. But then again, you don't have a heart to understand. You're filled with pride and arrogance and haughtiness because you think you know. You better study to show yourself approved. And you'd better be careful when you think you stand lest you fall. I've studied this out. I've looked at the words of Christ. I trust in Christ. And his words tell me that the Hebrews are lying and they should not be trusted. But you go run along back to them and see if you can figure out Proto-Hebraic and, and uh, oh, what is it? All the other, you know, all, all these, oh, well, this is how it sounds. Who told you that? Who told you that that's the proper sound of that particular character? Oh, that would have been Hebrew scholars. Oh, Hebrew scholars. You mean Talmudic scholars. You mean Babylonian Talmudic scholars. The same guys that changed the month that we're currently in right now from Ethanim to Tishri, the Babylonian term. Are you serving the God of Babylon? You go right ahead and serve the God of Babylon. You go ahead and be a Hebrew roots and serve the God of Babylon and try and do all these pronunciations and all that kind of crud. Meanwhile, those of us who are still on the vine, producing fruit, will continue to produce fruit. And you can be so proud and arrogant that you're cut off and burned. I have no, no decent words for you. I turn you over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that in the end times your soul might be saved, that you might actually come to see the truth. I don't like being this way, but I also don't like people coming in telling lies at my channel where I tell what I know to be true from the words of Christ in the New Testament, matching them with the Old Testament, which are also the words of Christ but only in their written understanding, certainly not in their pronunciation, because Hebrew was a dead language, and the only people who could revive it were liars and dreamers from the time of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 23, verses 27, 25 to 27, who sought to cause his people to forget his name, and they have, because there's nobody that knows this name Ayah. Oh, who's Ayah? What's Ayah? What's this Ayah thing? Look at the Hebrew verb that means I am. It's ayah. Simple. Simple. Nobody has time for that. They all want to be so smart in their own eyes. Good luck to you. To those with humble hearts, I'm sorry that you had to hear me go off like that, but I'm tired of people coming in and causing doubt and division where truth is being preached. The truth of Christ's words. They're of their father, the devil. And once they leave, or once they're separated away from us, we will know that they were never with us. Christ will never leave us nor forsake us because we have his word abiding in Him, in us. We have him in us. And from us, he will never do this. But those who do not abide in him and have his word abide in them, they're just showing themselves for who they've always been. They were never of Christ. Had they been of Christ, they would still be with us. 1 John 2.19 But they won't be. They'll be cut away and they'll be burned. Just don't let it be you. Come out of the church of Laodicea. Come out of the church of Babylon. Come out of this thing that is false religion and understand the truth of Christ. It's very simple. Maybe it's too simple for complicated minds that want to think that they're so wise in their own sight. God bless and take care.